Let's talk about the state. I don't have time to watch a lot of movies. But recently I've managed to squeeze one in. <laughs> squeeze one in. <laughs> you said action. All right, anyway, I also watched some Beavis and Butthead, so I'll try not to go there. I watched The Maltese Falcon. If you have not seen The Maltese Falcon, it's a great movie. Highly recommend it. As I was watching it, I thought about one of the reasons why I like older movies so much. Well, a couple of the reasons. First of all, there was very little evidence of the state in the movie. The police showed up but Sam Spade, as a private citizen, was able to deflect the police. Unlike today, where, of course, the police would just knock down your door and shoot you. And then get paid vacation and an award for doing so. There was little evidence of the state in the movie. The characters and their motivations were all personal and all flawed. Now, I just started watching Air Force One. Now, I remember it as being a very good movie. I haven't watched it in years, so I thought, hey, I'm going to watch this again. For those of you not in the know, Air Force One, Harrison Ford, it came out some time ago. Gary Oldman is the bad guy. I remember it being a very good movie. I'm like 20 minutes into it or something like that. And as I'm watching the movie... I realize how becoming an anarcho-capitalist has affected my ability to watch movies. Watching the Maltese Falcon about these flawed people <clears throat> excuse me, trying to make their way through their personal life and resolve their issues and grab the money and everything else had almost no indications of the state. Now, of course, Air Force One is exactly the opposite. And one might even say that that's to be expected. And you would be correct. I mean, it's a movie about the President of the United States, and most of the action in the movie takes place on the aircraft Air Force One. You really can't get much more statist than that right there. <clears throat> so the idea that the movie would be statist is not much of a surprise. But let's briefly recap as much as I remember it. I watched, just finished watching it you know, 90 seconds ago. The first 20 minutes, not the whole movie. So much I can remember. So it opens up with the American and Soviet or Russian military forces going in to kill some military leader because he was killing his own people. Okay, point number one. All, did I say military leader? Well, he was a general, but he took control of the country. So he was the leader of the country. He, if we'll call him the dictator. Again, the movie didn't exactly present in-depth political background on how he came to power and what was going on. But the implications of the movie that it gives you are that he was a general and he seized control of the government in this country and then he started killing his own people. Okay, first of all, 
all. <coughs> wow. I sounded like a dying animal right there. Oh. That's my voice going out. I haven't talked in a couple of hours. All. <coughs> yeah, obviously I haven't talked in a couple hours. Hold on. I need another drink of beer. Okay, that might help. All military leaders, god damn it, all government leaders, well, military leaders too, all government leaders throughout history have been responsible for killing their own citizens. Right now, in the United States of America, there's a war on drugs. People are being killed. Somehow or another, the idea that if a political leader Here's what's interesting. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. If a political leader takes people and puts them into concentration camps and kills them, that's bad. Adolf Hitler, the guy in this movie. That's pretty much it. Okay. Now, if you kill your people while they're in their homes, like with the war on drugs. Well, fuck, you're a goddamn savior. You're a great man. You're a leader. You're a visionary. If you kill people by letting them starve to death in their homes, like Joseph Stalin, well, you're a hero. You're a great man. You're a visionary. You cannot show me a government throughout the history of the human species, a full-fledged official state, I'm not talking about a couple of elders in a village of, you know, 52 people. I'm talking about a government. You cannot show me a government that does not kill its own citizens under some circumstances. China. I remember, I, what do you call that thing? Tiananmen Square. The Russian and American forces went in and kidnapped this guy and saved the day. Oh, now everything's great because this guy's not in power. Yet, what the stupid people don't realize so in this fictitious world and we'll pretend it's real because it parallels reality you remove the leader of the government from office but just as I've always said with Adolf Hitler Adolf Hitler did not kill any Jews the people who worked for the government willingly of their own free will, of their own volition, killed the Jews for him. In East Germany, the Stasi, whoever the leader of East Germany was, did not spy on all the East German citizens. The citizens spied on each other and the Stasi spied on the citizens. They all did this for the leader of the country. When you remove the leader of the state and pretend that things are going to change, you're wrong because all of the mechanism is still there and it's still running on autopilot. This is why in the United States we make this big fucking fuss over we elect a president every four years and oh, there's change and hope and all It's not. Again, how is six years of Obama, how has it been different from eight years of Bush? War on drugs, war in Afghanistan, Guantanamo Bay, spying on American citizens, spending money like a motherfucker. The only thing that's different is free birth control. If you're a woman, not if you're a man. I mean, what's different? Because all the mechanism of the state, it's still there, right? The NSA still does what it wants to do. The CIA, the FBI, the FDA. 
all these government organizations that regulate the transportation, education, agriculture, trade, all of these organizations, all of these mechanisms of the state, they don't give a fuck who the hell is in the White House or in the Kremlin. It doesn't matter. And this, this is one of the things that is so irritating about dealing with a fucking statist. They're so, and those of you who are ANCAPs know what I'm saying, they're so fucking stupid when they say, well, we elected a new president, things are going to change. It's like, how can you be, how can you be this stupid? Right, so like, you, you know what I'm talking about. It's like you look at these people and you wonder, how can this person be this stupid and still be capable of metabolizing oxygen into carbon dioxide. How does this person just not drop dead because they're too stupid for their fucking heart to pump their blood? The state is a self-perpetuating mechanism. The moment Adolf Hitler died, the concentration camps didn't just stop functioning and shut down. The minute George Bush stopped being president, the war in Afghanistan and the war on Iraq and the war on drugs didn't just stop. Then, in the movie, the president gives a speech where he doesn't give the speech, he makes stuff up, and he declares that the United States, in, in so many words, again, he uses, he uses Obama talk. His speech is actually just like an Obama speech. It says a bunch of words, but it doesn't mean anything. You have to kind of figure out what it means. Basically, he says that the United States acted too late, and no longer are we going to be afraid. We are going to make other people afraid. Implications being that the United States is going to lead this war on terrorism. You heard this one before. When you've got some cocksucker, be it Harrison Ford playing the president in a movie, or be it the Messiah, or be it Bush, or whatever cocksucker is president of the United States. When this cocksucker opens his filthy fucking mouth and says shit like, you know, we are coming after the terrorist, we are making, we are going to make you afraid, whatever it is, this we shit. In the movie, so the Russian president is introducing the president and he calls the president a brave man. Now, I watched the movie and when the American and Russian forces were capturing this guy and shooting other people and getting shot at, the president was not, Harrison Ford was not there. He was not in the scene. And I always love this shit. When military, or, God, I keep saying military because it's military. When government leaders refer to each other as brave, it's like, no, no, no. You motherfuckers are not fighting in these wars that you start. You want to show me some brave leader? As I've said before, let's just take all the government, lead, all the presidents and prime ministers and whatever the fuck they call themselves, put them all in a goddamn pit and toss in a knife. You guys fight. Show me how fucking brave you are. Whenever some cocksucker says, we are going to make the terrorists afraid, what they mean is, what Harrison Ford means in this movie when he gives this speech is, I am going to take money away from people who earn it and I am going to give it to the military industrial complex so that I can then send young men to foreign countries to kill people and to be killed. He, Harrison Ford, playing the president, this character, I don't know, I can't remember the president's name in the movie, so I'm just calling him Harrison Ford. And but Harrison Ford, good actor. I mean, you know, again, it's the performances in this movie. As I remember it, very strong so far watching it. Very strong. So, I, I, you know, we're talking about statism, but remember it's a movie. You can watch the movie, but yeah, it is hard to separate the statism. You should watch the movie. It's a good movie. At least that's what I remember. We'll find out. 
when he says this shit, what he's saying is, I am going to be sitting in the safety of the White House, surrounded by my guards, while I send other people to foreign countries to kill and to die. That's what people who are statist support. When you say, but without the government, who would build the roads? What you're saying is, you want other people to go to other countries to kill people and to die themselves while the person who sent them sits at home in a secure environment with no fear so that you can have a fucking flat place on the ground to drive your car. And this is why I hate you and this is why I despise you. And like other ANCAPs, well, we need to love or we, no, fuck no. No, I fucking hate you. You want other people to die for your personal convenience. Your shit, your scum, your garbage, you are filth, you should be dead. Your DNA needs to be removed from the gene pool because you are dangerous to everyone around you and you're dangerous to the species. Then, of course, the president gets in his caravan to drive to Air Force One. There are all these automobiles all burning fossil fuels. Where are the global warming wackos on this? Oh, where, oh, where are the global warming wackos? Every time the government burns up, I mean, how much oil and gasoline and petrochemicals are used every single day in Afghanistan to support the war. I don't have a number offhand. I've heard a couple, of, I've heard, I've seen a couple of sources here and there. All of them cite pretty fucking amazingly large numbers, which are believable having been in the military myself and having some understanding of the logistics it takes to run a military operation. Again, most of you out there are stupid. You're statists, you're cocksuckers, you're ignorant, you don't know math, you don't know economics, you don't know logistics. Having been in the military, I can tell you the logistics necessary to maintain military forces. They have to have fuel, they have to have food, they have to have ammunition, they have to have all kinds of supplies. All this stuff has to be moved around. The amount of logistics that go into maintaining a military campaign, a military operation, a permanent military presence, the amount of logistics required to do this is astronomical. So where are the fucking filthy little nasty global warming cocksuckers about all of this? Oh, but they voted for Obama, and now that Obama's the president, war is perfectly okay. It doesn't matter about environmental destruction now, because Obama's the president, and he's the messiah, and he cares about global warming, and he's going to give me free birth control, and he's going to pay my mortgage, and he's going to put gas in my car, and if I help him, he's going to help me.